Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 to 43 and 45 to 46, where it is written, Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. The tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other, st Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. When the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him. He'll put those wretched men to a wretched death, and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus then said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, by the Lord has this been done, and is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although, although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So Jesus is speaking in a not-so-thinly-veiled metaphor. For how many years now has God called the nation of Israel to be his people, and they failed? And now it's going to come to a climax in Jesus Christ coming to his people. And they, by and large, reject him. They kill him, hence the son being murdered in the parable. And that's not counting all the prophets and so on that have been killed along the way. Those would be the servants. Will these people ever get it? Well, that's a good question. But we know how the story ends. Jesus dies, and our sins are forgiven. He rises again to give us eternal life, and he plants the church with his apostles. We, the church, are the continuation, then, of the ancient nation of Israel as the people of God. Good for us. And here's the lesson from history. The Israelites, by every means, were God's people. And when they decided they could take God for granted, said they didn't have to worry, they'd do as they pleased, God, you're an errand boy, run our errands for us, that ended in disaster. He gave them plenty of opportunities to repent, but ultimately they did not, and God removed them. We are God's people now. All thanks be to God. The lesson for us from history is not to get cocky. Don't think of God as your property or your errand boy. But remember, yes, I am a sinner. Yes, I am, I am unworthy. I'm unworthy. Lord Jesus Christ on your cross, forgive me my sins. Whether, you know, it's gossip, alcohol, porn, you know, anything you struggle with, say, God, I did it. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And you're forgiven. And never, ever think, ah, God will understand. It's that attitude that kills. No, you're unworthy. No, you're forgiven. And Christ makes you worthy because your sins are forgiven. But you and yourselves are not worthy. Worthy of what? The resurrection. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He didn't come back as a ghost. We will arise with him on the last day. The entire creation set right. That's our destiny. That's salvation. No, we're not worthy. But we repent. Christ we're forgiven, and in Christ we are made worthy. The trick is don't get cocky. Don't think, yep, I'm there. Nothing to worry about. Good for me. No. That's what gets you killed eternally. No, you're not worthy. Every day, repent. It's that simple. Let us close with a prayer. God, for my sins yesterday and today, God, please forgive me. At the cross, you forgive me, God. In the empty tomb, you raise me to new life. 
God, guide me in the faith always. Amen.